Humans aren't the only creatures on God's earth capable of designing and building interesting homes. There are a lot of animals that could rival the greatest human architects. So many, in fact, that this is actually our second video on the subject. These are the 20 most amazing homes built by animal architects, part two. Number 20. Spiral Beehive We'll begin with the species that we all know have creative prowess when it comes to their homes, bees. Just a standard beehive is a marvel in terms of the layers and detail that goes into just about every spot, but then you find out that certain bees try and top that, and then you're in awe. Specifically, I'm talking about the Southeast Asian and Australian stingless bee, whose hives are honestly spirals in nature. And if you don't believe me, here's some images. What's more, apparently these bees are not content with just doing one kind of design in terms of the spiral, they'll actually do other kinds as well, which includes making one that even looks like a bullseye. But that raises the question, why in the world would they go and do something like that? That's the mystery that many scientists have been trying to figure out, and some of the things they've discovered are fascinating. For example, according to some mathematical formulas, they noted that these beehive structures are built in such a way that it resembles the formation of crystals. But how would the bees know how crystals grow? That nobody really knows, and that's why it's such a fascinating thing, because if you think about it, this is some high-level concept building. Just think about what it takes for humans to make something like a spiral building, and then try to put that into the perspective of a bee. They can't process everything like we can, and they only communicate in certain ways that we don't fully understand. So how is it that they can make such structures? Nobody knows, and that's what makes it all the more mesmerizing. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Now it's time for the sweet topic. Let's take a moment to appreciate how incredible that birds' nests are. What type? Well, to be honest, all of them. Every bird makes a unique style of bird's nest, and all of them are both incredible and beautiful. There are nests that look like dangling fruit, ones that are on the ground, ones that are built in water and float on lily pads, and more. The animal kingdom is simply incredible. As always, comment down below with the hashtag sweet topic and let me know your opinion in relation to what I just showed you on the screen. Number 19. Bower Bird Bachelor Pad when it comes to the animal world, there are certain things that are absolute, and one of them is that when it comes to mating, they take it very seriously. Now sure, animals mate and find mates in different ways, that's just their nature, but if you look at the large variety of species out there, you'll know that some go to great lengths in order to ensure that they find a mate and reproduce. For the bower bird, that means making sure that you have the perfect place to bring the ladies. Yes, this is a bird that well and truly makes his own bachelor pad. Oh, what a world we live in. Believe it or not, some scientists have likened the Bower Bird's bachelor pad to a teenager's car. But why is that? Well, it's because in their minds, which means they need to broaden them, the only purpose is to bring women to them, which obviously disrespects car owners who want a nice car as well. Just have a nice car already. Getting back to the bird and its pad, each individual's bower is unique to its creator, and it varies in size and arrangement, depending on the species that built it. For instance, the bowers of the great bower bird include densely thatched structures about a yard tall and wide called avenues, and then unlike an interior decorator, it's going to use certain items of colors like reds and blues in order to help make the pad stand out for the ladies. As you can see, they really do take this seriously, and not unlike a bachelor, after the mating season's done, he'll leave his home to rot until it's time to start things up again next season. Wow. Oh, such integrity. Number 18. Social Wasps 
Social wasps, as they're known, are rather incredible when it comes to the building of their homes, not the least of which is that they're designed to house thousands of wasps, and they do it not only with such precision that it's astounding, but also they do it in just about any place they find suitable, including my nightmares. While that may not sound impressive at first, it's important to note that most animal species prefer one type of place to make their nest or their den or what have you, but for social wasps, they're able to build their nests just about anywhere, so long as it's dry enough and they have decent materials. Case in point, you can find these nests up in trees, on the porches of houses, on the ground if the spot is right, and so on and so forth. And then when you look at the nests, you'll see that they are truly detailed in regards to their comb structure and all the depth that's within. Granted, you probably shouldn't get close to these nests when the wasps are in them, but when they're gone, there's something to appreciate. Number 17. Wren Nest it honestly shouldn't be too much of a surprise that there are multiple birds on the list, mainly because birds are a species that have to not just make their homes via their nests, but oftentimes expand them or repair them should they get damaged. So if they didn't make good homes for themselves, that would be much more surprising. However, there are exceptions to the standard nest rule, and one of those examples is that of the wren. But why? Well, it's because if you think of a bird's nest, you typically think of them in the branches of trees or in certain species of bird within the tree itself, just like the owl. However, when it comes to wrens, especially ones like the Carolina wren, they will literally make their nest in just about anything, and I do mean anything. If you go to a city area or a suburb where there are wrens, you'll likely find their nests in spots that you wouldn't think were possible, such as within a grill or a tire, or even in a scrap of trash on the side of the road. The wrens will settle in boxes, they'll settle in plant statues, and if they can find a way to make a nest in a certain spot, they're absolutely going to do it and surprise the heck out of you when they pop up in a place that you didn't expect them to be. And that right there's the fun thing because it shows their adaptability and how they're willing to seek out the least likely options for their homes to do things like living, mating, and so on. So in a way, they're honestly thinking like humans by using what's available to them. Number 16. European Redwood Ants when it comes to insects, ants are absolutely one of the creatures by which we've seen great architecture from. After all, ant colonies as a whole are not only structurally sound, but they adapt and evolve when danger comes, like a human kicking it over or to suit the needs of the colony itself. For European redwood ants, they in particular are really good at building their homes, but why is that? Well, picture an ant hill that you've likely seen recently around your home or when you were in the woods or something, how big is that one? Maybe a foot? Probably a little less? Well, for the European redwood ants, they don't make hills that are a foot tall, they make hills that are feet tall, at times almost as tall as a human being. These mounds are marvels of engineering with a complex array of tunnels and chambers. In a carefully controlled environment, nests may be interlinked, forming in extreme cases vast colonies of up to 400 million individual ants that cover an area of more than two and a half kilometers square. Their sheer abundance and collective biomass in temperate forests can rival any mammalian predator. Just ponder that number for a moment though. 400 million ants in one of these massive mounds. Dealing with four ants or 40 or even 400 would be frightening enough in the right setting, but 400 million? I'm going to be fine never ever seeing these up close. In terms of engineering though, it's a marvel because these are small creatures making these huge homes and it's truly something that you don't see or experience every day. Number 15. Caddisflies. 
From one insect to another, we now find ourselves looking at the caddisflies, which are a species of aquatic insect, and a rather numerous one at that. In fact, there's said to be over 7,000 caddisflies in the world today, with over 1,300 of which are only in North America. It's clearly a species that thrives all over, and by extension, has to have a special home, right? Well, it does depend on what part of their cycle they're in. For example, these species are grown in bulk, like 800 eggs per female in a jelly, and then the mother will spin protective tubes around her larva and put them in places where they can be protected. The architecture of these protective pods alone are something to marvel at. When they're adults, their habitats vary based on their individual species and where they're located. In fact, they're known to have a wide variety of places that they could live in, even if they don't live in those spots over time. Due to the specific habitat preferences of different species, many of them can coexist in a single stream or river, and that's something you wouldn't expect when you look at how other animals don't like to coexist. Due to them being nocturnal insects, they like to hide in cool spots in the day, thus allowing them to have a diverse set of places that they could go and be in. Number 14. Rufus Hornero Nest and now we're back to the birds, but I promise this one has a twist that you might not see coming. Because as you would expect, parental birds have a balance that they need to maintain in order for their family and species to survive. Mainly, they need to make sure that they have enough food to live, but if they have eggs, they need to both keep them warm and protected. If those bird species are in a place where it's hard to keep that balance, then they'll need to improvise. That brings us to the Rufus Hornero nests. These are nests that have a very specific purpose of being an incubation chamber. They've made large mud compiled nests that allow the parent bird to put their eggs in safely, have them be at a certain warm temperature, and thus it then allows them to go out and search the area for food without the fear of their eggs being neglected. All in all, it's not a bad strategy. But here's the other wrinkle. How they actually came up with this idea is not really known. And if you think about it, that does make sense. Birds are not the ones that you would associate with mud, let alone making stuff with it in unique patterns that you're seeing now. What's more, how would they even realize that these structures would keep their eggs warm if they made them in such a way? That's what's all baffling scientists even to this day. But no matter the rhyme or reason, you cannot deny that it works, and since it works, they're going to keep doing it until it doesn't. Number 13, Beaver Dam. And here we have an all-time classic architect who knows what they're doing, how to do it, and in fact has inspired humans in terms of how to do certain things with architecture. Of course, I'm talking about beaver dams. Beaver dams are legendary for not only being solid structures, but for being able to block off rivers, streams, and other bodies of water just so that they can have a home to live in via the area that the dam creates. Despite what people may think though, they don't live in the dams themselves, and they will do it with nothing more than their basic appendages. Oh, and of course their tails. Going back to the home element, they do build these dams so that they can have a deep pool of water in which they go and make their special homes that will be safe from predators, and it also serves as a food store, one that none but beavers can get to for obvious reasons. As if all that constructive mastery wasn't enough, they also make underwater tunnels so that should a predator show up when they're above ground, they can dive into the water and get away with ease. That's a level of foresight that can't be ignored, and thus you can see why they've gotten so good at building these dams. Because their lives literally depend on it, and when that's the case, you well and truly bring forth all your effort to get something done. Number 12. Leaf Curling Spider Web now, as I've noted in various videos before, I hate spiders. They can be just about anywhere and surprise you when they show up. They also can bite you and potentially kill you with various amounts of venom. They're creepy as all get out. 
But even I have to admit that when it comes to spiders, they do know how to make the environment work for them, such as with the leaf curling spider. Leaf curling spiders hoist a leaf from the ground and, using silk threads, curl it to form a protective cylinder, silked shut at the top and open at the hub. They then sit inside this cylinder with only their legs showing, feeling for the vibrations of a captured insect. After they feel the vibrations, like Marky Mark and the Funky Bunch, you can imagine what it does to the insect that gets caught in it as well. Regardless of your imagination, this is what the spider does to ensure that it doesn't get attacked by predators when it needs to be active and fed. Just as important though is that this is a very clever trick in that it protects them while also allowing them to hunt for food. This is a clever adaptation that's no doubt come about out after getting taken by birds and various insects, or in other words, it's at its finest because there was a need that had to be compensated for and they went about getting what they needed in the most efficient way possible. Number 11. Prairie Dog Towns Prairie dogs are very curious creatures, and to some, they're a menace. But if you look at what they do in order to live, you'll see that they're rather intelligent creatures that know how to build homes. In fact, they're so good at building their underground homes that they're literally called towns. Prairie dog towns are a maze of underground tunnels. They can cover hundreds of acres and also include a number of family groups called coteries. Think about that one for a moment. Most animal homes are meant for a singular entity or family. Some like beehives, for example, or even ant mounds, can hold many entities but are rather contained in terms of space. However, for these prairie dog towns, they span a massive amount of space, and that's not something that most animals do. What's more, they're so large that they occasionally get visitors via other animals that either use them for protection or are trying to sneak in to get a meal. But even if they do get in, Obviously, the prairie dogs have the advantage as they know their homes better than most. Of course, the catch is that even though there are various prairie dog families living in these tunnels, they don't always get along and they can get very territorial very quickly. However, on the flip side, when there is danger, they're known to warn the other families so everyone can be safe. Number 10. Monarch Butterflies among the butterflies of the world, the monarch butterfly is easily one of the most beautiful and beloved, but for those who want to try and raise a bunch of them, you're going to need to be careful because their habitats are very much rooted in something quite basic milkweeds. Yes, these butterflies are clever enough to make their home and food supply in things that both grow naturally and humans help to make. In fact, they legitimately only breed in places where milkweeds are found, likely because it allows them to not go far away from their young in order to feed them. In the wild, and especially for certain insects, this is what's known as having a host plant because the insect uses this plant in a variety of ways to help it grow and survive. Thus, if you do try to take that away from the butterfly, and especially its larva, then it won't grow, so they know what they need and what they want, and they're going to make sure that they get it. Number 9. Trapdoor Spiders Ah uh, yes, back to spiders we go. Can't you just feel my excitement in this entry? Can't you hear me screaming from my nightmares? When it comes to the trapdoor spider, you can't deny that they are yet another one that's good at keeping its habitat not only protected, but using it in such a way to get food. Because not unlike the leaf spider, the trap door uses nature to its advantage. And here's how it goes down. The spiders will either find or make a hole, then they'll cover it in natural refuse and debris that they find around the forest, and this makes them all but invisible to the predators and prey of the world. Then they're going to put out invisible detectors so that when something trips it, they rush out of the trap door, grab it, and then bring it into the hole. And if it's prey, it gets eaten, and if it's too protected or something that it can't munch on, they're going to throw it out and go back to hiding. It may not be the easiest of lifestyles, but when it gets the job done and keeps you safe, you learn not to complain. Number 8. 
Mud daubers. Mud daubers are actually a kind of wasp, which you would think would mean that they live in nests or near trees, but no, because they're known as mud daubers, they well and truly make their homes in, that's right, the mud of their habitats. A female will carry mud balls from a puddle to the nest site, a cell that takes about an hour to construct. Their buzzy singing while applying mud to a nest is one of the many interesting habits and behaviors that you can experience if you time it right. These mud daubers are able to make their homes in any kind of mud, regardless of whether it's in the wild near caves or even outside of your home. This can make them a bit of a problem if you're in the wrong area, but if you're careful, you should be fine. But if nothing else, it does show that these wasps are clever in regards to where they will make their homes. Number seven, scorpions. At first, you might not think that scorpions are the best at making their homes, especially since they can live in various habitats, but that's where the twist comes in. Because while it's true that they can live in places like deserts or even snow-covered mountaintops, they also have the ability to make all sorts of small cracks and holes into their burrow homes. Their home range, if you will, is known to be rather large. Some species have even been found at 2,600 feet within the ground. That's a long way to go to find somewhere to live. Other species are so adept at making places their home that they can squish their bodies to fit into cracks or even walk upside down to get to the place they need to be. That's also why they're so dangerous. Because you might think that there's no way that a scorpion is near you and then one crawls out from behind and gets you. Number six, Carpenter Bee. Now you might immediately think that the carpenter bee is one that's like its bee brethren to go to great lengths to make a hive to grow its young, but actually not so much. They're named for their habitat of excavating holes in the wood in order to rear their young, a very stark contrast from the standard way that bees make their homes. In fact, they never live in hives at all during their time alive. The adults will endure winter individually, often in previously constructed brood tunnels. Those that do survive the winter will emerge and mate the following spring. So yeah, it's a very clear difference from how other bees work. And that's part of what makes them so special, because unlike other bee species, they do very simple things in order to survive and grow their young. They'll dig holes in trees. What could be more simple? And clearly it does work for them, because the species is still alive and buzzing. Number five, praying mantis. Now, this is a creature that knows how to make an impact and scare the crap out of you at the same time. Just on its own, the praying mantis is an imposing creature, but then you learn that after it mates, it actually devours the one that it mates with, and you kind of wonder how something like this is allowed to be born. Thankfully though, the mother is much more loving and caring of its spawn versus its partner, and that's because the mother mantis goes to great lengths to ensure that her young survive by putting them in a very protective sack that other insects can't get into. In fact, it's so protective that she can put around 300 eggs into one sack. What's more, the mother's able to put this sack into various spots all over nature, which includes plants, but also on walls and even inside of homes if she can find a good spot. A lot of people actually go looking for these sacks as it gives them great insights into the ways of the praying mantis. Number four, spider webs. Are you surprised? Now, granted, this isn't the most complicated of architecture out there in the animal world, but when you really think about it, spider webs are one of the most creative homes in the wild, not the least of which is because of how spider webs, at times, are individually configured to the spider species themselves. That's why you have, at times, very thick webs or even very thin ones that can be downright invisible. These webs are so in tune with the spider that it always knows when something's in it and thus is able to strike on whatever prey it's captured. 
There are even spiders that make webs dozens of feet long, covering fields or even bodies of water, all so that it can eat and live in balance within its ecosystem. Spiders are in fact very creative and know how to use what they have to live. Number three, orangutan hammock. One thing that a lot of people believe in regards to the evolution of humanity is that we come from apes or various monkey species. While a lot of people may debate this, you can't deny that certain primate species have been known to show rather human-like ingenuity when it comes down to it. And should you not believe that, here's an orangutan who decided to make a hammock for itself. Yes, that happened. This primate took a towel, wrapped it around its cage, and made a hammock to just relax in. But why? Well, because it could. Where did it learn to make a hammock-like design? That's hard to say. It is possible that they saw it from its human caretakers, but obviously nobody knows. But that's also not the point, though, because the point is that it did it and then decided to chillax like nothing was going on. Isn't this how Planet of the Apes began? Number 2. Ant Hill now, I've already talked about the massive ant hills of certain wood ants, but don't knock the engineering feats of the basic ants and their ability to make special ant hills to house their colony. Not the least of which is because, if you think about it, the ants have nothing to go on but their instincts and their teamwork. How do they even know that this ant hill will be what it needs to be? We don't know, but they do somehow, and as a result, these incredible ant hills get made and are able to do everything that the ants need them to do. That's skill right there. Number 1. Turtle Shells Turtles have been known to make homes all over the place, both on land and in the water, but if you think about their other home, it's equally as creative. Their shells. Because turtles are known to hide within their shells when predators come out to attack. Their shells are even fused to their bones so that they can literally never lose them, unlike a certain Koopa species in Mario Brothers. And so, in essence, they have another home that they can make on demand and ensure that they would be safe in it for the most part. Now, sure, most turtles prefer not to be in their shells all the time, but sometimes you just gotta do what you gotta do. And that's all from the realm of animals who know how to make some really nice houses. What did you think of these amazing animal architects who have made some truly impressive places? And did you ever think that animals could do such creative things? Be sure to let me know all about it in the comments below. Also, be sure to check out the other cool stuff showing up on the screen. And I'll see you next time.